Hello everyone, this is Asnoitia here. Welcome to Asnoitia Audio. For those of you who are returning, thank you so much for liking, sharing, and subscribing to this channel. And for those of you who are new, welcome. So today's topic is going to be about negative energies. I have often talked about negative energies in my tarot reading channel and it really does have a wide spectrum of effects on a human being's life from birth even all the way to the end. I wanted to talk a little bit about this because so many people have reached out to me and they just want to know more and because I have a lot of personal experience which I it's it's beyond the scope of this particular recording but one day I will share many, many of my stories that I have uh, when dealing with negative energies. A list that I have made, as I usually do, I will be adding information and intuitively as well. Hopefully, at the end of this uh, recording, you'll be able to understand a little bit more about how these negative energies work around us. So the first question is, what are negative energies? There's a variety of different types of energies all around us, on our planet, in the galaxy, in the universe. And each energy almost has like a signature, a mood almost, you could say. Each mood has its own type of property. And depending on an individual, a human being, on what you are radiating from yourself, those types of negative energies will be attracted to certain types of people at certain places at certain times in their life. In this recording, I'm going to be talking more about jinns, demons, evil spirits, which is something that is very common in our everyday life. Some of us know about it, some of us don't. Some of us tend to deny it, because we haven't had that experience of seeing is believing, but sometimes also even after you have an experience, people still are in denial. Now, jinns, demons, and evil spirits. These are entities that exist in a different frequency, but they can hear us, they can see us, and they can even feel us. The different frequency means that we're living on planet Earth, and we're sharing the same living space as these negative energies. Think of the world, planet Earth, as an onion. Think of it as an onion. An onion has many layers, but it is one unit. The unit is planet Earth. Different layers are the different dimensions. There are different timelines, different realms, different dimensions. But the one I'm talking about is the one that is just below the surface of the earth and slightly above. So this dimension does exist on a different frequency that is not really um, accessible by human beings, at least not yet, on a scientific level, if somebody was to have a look at what exactly is, uh, is a negative energy and where they come from. It's not easy to find that. So there are seven levels of heaven and seven levels of hell and these exist on a different dimension. These are the levels that affect human beings and the spirit as well as sometimes the soul. Now, on planet Earth, imagine, like I mentioned, this onion that we live in, just above and below the surface of our crust where we are. This is where a lot of negative energies lie. And the further down we go, the stronger the negative energies become in terms of power. Now, that would mean the seventh is where we are. The first is all the way on the bottom. And on different levels, there are different types of beings. And they all have their own type of properties. They all look different. But their objective is the same, and one day I'll get into that as well, it's different. But their objective is to basically bring down humankind. Why? 
in order to build their own population, their own army. However, it's unfortunate because sometimes we do get stuck in certain situations and it creates a lifetime of issues for a human being. And sometimes we die too soon or we take our own life and we say, oh, there were voices in my head. Yeah, those voices, they're not just random voices. They come in through different areas of your body. So I have here jinns. All right. What they do to us and who are they? So there's more details about what a jinn is. According to Islamic writings, jinns live alongside other creatures, but they're from a world other than that of mankind. These days we would say humankind. Though they see us, they cannot be seen by us. Is that true? Not really. Why? Because there's some human beings out there that have the ability of actually seeing. The majority of people don't. I have seen. I know people who have seen. Jinns. I've seen various forms of jinns. Some have been simply just black shadows, very short in stature, maybe four feet, a little less. Smoky kind of images. Now, did I see it directly in front of me? No. Often these type of, this type of imagery, this type of a manifested entity, it is visible through the peripheral vision. And usually what happens is we're not really paying attention. Now, is it very common? I have to say in certain cultures it is. Me being from an Eastern background, it is very common from where I come from, my home country, India. I mean, I am born and raised in Canada, but my ethnic background is Indian. And over there, we have the Middle East, very famous there. But these things exist. Do they exist everywhere else? Yeah, they do. But they were just noticed and they were talked about in certain texts in ancient times. Now, they are very much a being that is in a different dimension, but their form is that of a smokeless fire. That's what they call it, a smokeless fire. Now, are all jinns evil? No, no, they're not, not all of them. Just like human beings, when somebody is evil, their spirit becomes evil. When we die, we have an evil spirit that defines us as humans. Now, this smokeless fire being called the jinn, they are not all evil, but some of them can be, just like human beings. What I've seen is, and I'll give you a little bit of my own experience. <laughs> it was terrible, but what I've seen is the head of a human, but the shadow of the head of a human, the hands on the ground like a lizard. It was like a lizard, but with the head of a human. It's a very weird way of me explaining this, but that's what I saw. And where was it exiting from? From my bathroom. This was back in the day when so much stuff was happening to me in my life and there was a lot of negative energy invading, being sent over by others that are jealous. And I saw this thing from the corner of my eye leave the bathroom. And I remembered because I was trying to do some prayers. I was learning how to do certain things. I was trying my best to get rid of these things, but it just wasn't working. And so afterwards, I, I knew what to do. Years later, I discovered, and I was enlightened, anointed, protected by God, the divine. And so now I know how to heal from this kind of stuff, and that's why I want to teach everybody out there how to do this. So, for example, I just want to go into um, a little bit about the jinns. So, do they actually bother us on purpose? Usually, no. Unfortunately, they don't have that much will or freedom as human beings do. That's one thing about them. 
they do have families, what they would call a family, offsprings, brothers, sisters, all that. They do have that. Now, what's interesting is that I saw a case once, and it was very bad, and then it also happened to me, because one of the pundits that I'd gone to, they had told me this, and he got rid of them. And one day I'll talk about that story. It's a crazy story. It's a really, really intense story. So what happened was that somebody did black magic on an individual and forced, made a contract with jinns to go inside of this person and create problems, basically just stay there. Now the issue is those jinns sometimes are not evil. But they are stuck inside there. And what do these other people do? They are so clever. They get other jinns to guard around the aura that jinn or those jinns that are inside. So you have jinns on the outside, jinns on the inside, and the outside jinns are basically like guard dogs, like they're guarding. And their rule is no, you are not going to exit this person because if you do, I'm going to kill you, and I'm going to kill your family. That is very sad. That is very evil. That is pure evil. Goodness is needed in the world in every dimension. And just imagine what this being has to go through. Living in a person's body, trying to create havoc. And if you don't, you get in trouble. Now, sometimes... There are definitely negative energies, negative jinns. There are those. So they are sent. They are given an offering. And so they, in their dimension, they get what they want. They get happy. They decide to create a lot of problems in a human being's life. Their mind, body, spirit, and soul, their body itself, the chakra centers, they go inside of your chakra centers. All of these negative energies, the centers are energy centers the chakras. These are energies mixed with energy. Energy can mix with energy. It's like water mixing with water. I just teach people how to extract the dirty water from the clean water. Filtration system, right? We can all do that. It's not hard to do. It's just a matter of faith, a matter of trust, and a whole lot of anger from your side because this is your life. So these things do take charge of our lives and it creates havoc. For jinns specifically, they do have capacity of doing certain things, but it's slightly limited. It's more their, and I'm getting this right now um, from a higher level uh, intuition, I'm getting this right now too. One of the things with, with jinns is that when they are close to a human being, they don't have a lot of effect on the external about, I'm getting one right now, uh, about one meter. So about three feet beyond that, they don't actually have a lot of, a lot of power in terms of the influence that they'd have in your life. So it's very, very direct. And it's very different from what an evil spirit can do. It's very different from what a demon can do. There's differences there. So there's different levels. So unfortunately, jinn sometimes do get a bad rep. Some of them are good. Some of them are bad, and some of them are used for bad. And once they do bad, then they become bad, because that is something that they have done in terms of an action. Just like a human being, we do something bad, right? Something against the law. If the law is um, just, then the person goes to jail, right? So this is something that happens. It is something that is unseen, but it is something that is felt. And doctors cannot tell why sometimes people fall ill. I've had a lot of clients come to me. I've even had doctors come to me, which is like surprising for me. Reiki masters, people that are masters in, in chakra and yoga therapy, they come to me to clear their chakras and to get rid of their negative energies. So even if you're doing yoga, even if you're doing meditation, there's something called this tangible force. You have it. A person has it. All human beings have it because we have a spirit and a soul, a conscious mind. And we have to be the ones actually taking that type of step, taking that action in order to get rid of these things. 
Also, I wanted to mention that these beings, they would be considered beings because they are on a different realm and a different dimension. They are not really considered entities, but because of the nature of them and what they can do, the bad things that they can do to a human being, that is why some people actually call them entities. They do have the ability of flying, they can walk, they can take form as a person, they can take form as an animal, it could be anything. Sometimes even objects. Objects may appear, they may disappear. Sometimes they are the ones making it disappear. They don't make it really disappear, but they put a film and we're unable to see that uh, through the film. So there's a bunch of variety here when it comes to jinns. Now switching over to evil spirits. What are they? Who are they? Where do they come from? When we are born, I've been told by my angel guide, Angel Fakio, and I still have to do more research on this and maybe provide more clarity on this in the future. When we're born on planet Earth, the Earth itself, who we call Gaia, the essence of it actually provides the body with a spirit. The spirit itself doesn't have a different type of form. The spirit takes on the shape of the body. So that is why sometimes you may hear people saying or claiming that they saw the ghost of such and such, or I saw the apparition of this person. Now, why is it that that spirit that they had seen, that ghost that they had seen, why is it that it looked like that person? Because that is the identity of a human being when they are born. That identity itself, the spirit itself, is neither negative nor positive. However, the charge itself is considered negative. There's a charge, an electric charge, and it's on the spectrum of negative. And with the human body, the soul and the human body, the energy we have is positive, so that's how they're both connected, negative and positive. And the energy that they have comes from the frequency of certain feelings and emotions. What I mean by that is when a person, and a person defines the type of spirit that exists long after we're gone. A spirit is new, it's born, and it has a choice of being a good spirit or a bad spirit. But what dictates that behavior, that final result, the actions of the human being. So let's say somebody in this lifetime, through hardships of their own, they turned into somebody who was very negative. They unknowingly attract a lot of negative energies. And what happens in the end, let's say they become somebody who's violent, maybe even a murderer. This individual has committed certain things that are against the laws of karma against the laws of nature. What happens is when that person dies, the energy that they have, the essence that they have, the feelings and emotions and the instincts that they had, that gets transferred and is immersed and is enveloped by the spirit. So when somebody who we would call a bad person or an evil person dies, their spirit at that point is considered evil. And unfortunately, there's, I mean, there is a variety of spirits out there. But when we're dealing with something that is called an evil spirit, it has no way of thinking in any other fashion. It, it, is, it is the essence of what it was before. And it does not change. It's very rare for a spirit to change. A soul, however, is completely different that I could talk about maybe in another audio recording. So if a person is a very good person, if they're a very caring person, loving, and they've done just good karma their entire life, when they pass away, when they die, it is not a problem. They are at a higher level of consciousness. They are happier. Their spirit gets to be, and I can say this because I 
get the information from my angel guide, Angel Fakiel. She's from the virtues hierarchy of angels, from that family. Some of them can come and go to heaven and come back to planet Earth as a visitation. So they do that. And those are what we call spirit guides, a good spirit guide. This can be our family members, our grandparents, parents. It could be anybody, loved one. So this is something that happens. In this lifetime, if you are frustrated, angry, depressed, and if you pass away in that state, you sometimes have spirits who attach themselves onto people that may be depressed. So for example, the spirit has a label, the spirit of depression, the spirit of anger, the spirit of hatred. Every type of emotion creates a different frequency and it resonates with that type of spirit. So if somebody is depressed, they will attract a spirit of depression without knowing they don't know this. And what happens is, because that is what defines the spirit, that is its label. And when it attaches itself onto somebody like a human who is radiating this depressive energy, it feeds off of that energy and it becomes stronger. The problem is, when it's feeding off of another person's energy, it also begins to drain that person energetically. It's not a good thing. Human beings are not meant to be drained. Human beings are meant to be strong and meant to complete and accomplish our dreams. What happens is these particular entities, and these I will call entities, they do attach themselves. So if somebody is frustrated and angry and depressed, those three kinds of negative energies will get attracted and attached onto that person. It's like an individual is sending out a radio wave frequency. And these negative energies from anywhere, anywhere around the world in the physical plane or even in the spiritual, they feel it, they sense it. And whichever ones want and need somebody at that moment in time, they will become attached. Typically, it happens if you are in close proximity to an area where there's sometimes passing by spirits. And so they can pick up on this that, oh, this person has this frequency. It's almost like, um, it's almost like we're, we're sending out an arrow. And that arrow has been noticed by negative energies. And they literally sit on top of that arrow. However, it's a U-turn, then they come back. So then they come back, and then often what happens from, I've seen d throughout my readings as well, when we are sad, it can increase over time to depression. From depression, then you just want to hurt yourself sometimes. So it increases, but what really creates that increase, yes, it's a lot of mental health issues, but this is a pseudoscience. This is metaphysical in nature. This is the kind of stuff I do. These negative energies have that capability of draining a person and also influencing them with their moods. The mood of a spirit that would be depressed would be this, the, the mood of depression. The person would feel more depressed. Now, it's not just one spirit of depression. There are millions of people, billions of people that have died right? And so there are many spirits. So it's not just one spirit of depression that might get attached onto this human being. It may be more than one. It could be three or four. Average I've seen, honestly, I mean, it can range. The highest I've ever seen in terms of spirit around a person's aura or inside of their body, probably around nine, nine, hardly ever, 10 or 11, but roughly around nine. But that's nine just spirits, evil spirits, inside of a person's chakra centers in their body and around their aura. These things do have an effect on us because they enhance our moods. However, the enhancement is not good. These are depressive states. This is anger and rage. That's why sometimes when we're in an argument, oh, 
when two people are arguing, if we had special x-ray glasses where we could see negative energies, we would see a few of them behind one person. Let's just call it Jack and Jill, okay? <laughs> Jack and Jill. So you'll see a bunch of negative energies behind Jack and a bunch of negative energies behind Jill. And it will be the negative energies that are egging them on, that are telling them, that are influencing them through their moods, through their moods. So it increases. The discussion may be a heated discussion, heated debate turns into a full-fledged argument. Something happens and someone goes a little cuckoo and then violence begins. So these things escalate, but it's the energy. We get more energy. And unfortunately, so many people just don't know this. They don't believe it. How are these things starting to affect humans? Like I said, it's beyond the scope of this recording because it's so lengthy. It's, there's a lot of information. And I want to just talk about the basics for now. In the future, I will get into more details. These negative energies can come from many places. It can be from a place, what we call a haunted house. It could be coming from a person that is jealous and it jumps on from that person to us, like a, like, like a tick or a flea. When it jumps from one person or one uh, creature to the other, that is exactly what they're like. So if somebody's depressed and they're meeting somebody else who's depressed, then what happens is that the person who is more depressed will be a tastier treat. And by treat... That's what happens. They become a tasty treat and this negative energy starts to feed off of it. Now, once we change our behavior, once we become enlightened, once we become more religious, uh, depends on the religion too. Um, it has to be a religion of the light, the supreme being of the universe. Once you tap into that frequency you start to taste sour and bitter and they don't like you anymore and that's when they leave because you're no longer that that person that is depressed no you found a good friend you went to a therapist you talked to a doctor you you started some meditation some yoga you got religious right this is what happens your frequency changes and then these things they start to repel it's like you're starting to radiate this energy it's almost like I mean, I don't want to use the idea of um, something that's nuclear, but it's like radiation. It's radiating from you in waves from the inside to the outside, and then everything around you gets pushed away, just like you'll see in movies. In many countries, everybody has special effects these days, so you guys know. It's like this force that's around your aura, and it pushes things aside. That is what it's like. Now, demons... What are they? Are they bound to earth? Nope, actually no. Demons often, the first recorded kind of demons that were um, talked about and written were demons from what we call the dimension of heaven. And they weren't demons at that time. They were angels, fell in love with the daughters of man. Yes, us ladies are just that pretty brought down angels good god and so they were fallen angels and they became demons now now does everybody have wings no no there's many many types of demons there are animal demons and they take form they take form but some forms they actually prefer some have been dogs scary looking ones i've seen i, I, I felt like a tiger and you can hear the sound, you can feel the weight. I've had one step on top of me while I was sleeping, could not get up for the life of me. But now that doesn't happen. No. A lot of things that I've seen have happened because of black magic. It hasn't happened because I've explored some haunted realms or done some crazy stuff like in the forest or some stuff like that. I've never done any of that stuff. I was only trying to stay away from this kind of stuff because I was a victim for about 24 years, not just 20, 24 years. 
it was terrible. And um, if you want something done, you got to do it yourself. I spent lots of money on many shamans, priests, beers, many people that have tried to help me, psychics. I spent a lot of money, thousands of dollars, when I was, and I was struggling. I mean, I was, I was not in a good place. I had three jobs at some point in my life. At the, on the same day, I would have three jobs, three different shifts at three different places. And I also, at some point in time, had to survive on money from the government, welfare. And so there's been a lot of struggle that I've seen, too, in my own life. But these negative energies, that's what the point was. That's why they wanted me to suffer. They wanted me to suffer. It wasn't originally written in my book of life. I do hand readings. I do palmistry, but I don't do it for anybody right now. I just I keep away from that right now. That's not my focus. But my hand. I've been told don't show people because I will get the evil eye on my hand. And that's exactly what happened back when I was in India. Lots of things would happen. People would give me the evil eye. And these things accumulate over time. And it becomes bigger and bigger and bigger and heavier and heavier. And eventually, you're just surrounded by negative energies. Now, these demons, going back to them, they, they're they more like, let's just say they're like officers. Okay, yes. Let's, let's categorize them. So a demon would be in the category of an officer. And a, an evil spirit would be more like a soldier. So it does have more power. The demons have more power, the demons have more knowledge, the demons are more clever, and because they live in a sp in space-time where the past, present, and the future all exist at one point, they can actually see, and they can actually predict the future, which is why people love Ouija boards, which you should never mess around with. No, bad idea. Don't mess around with Ouija boards. Let them be in their dimension and let us be in ours. Let's not mix that stuff up. Because when I say it's bad, what does bad mean? It means it's not healthy for you as a human being. For your health, it's not good. So these demons have this ability of ruining one's life. How do they ruin it? They can see the past, the present, and the future because it exists in the spiritual realm all at one point. So can evil spirits, actually. But the demons are more clever, and so they are able, and many of you might have experienced this in your life, there are some days when our lives just feel like crap. And we ask the question, why me? Why did this have to happen right now? We wake up late, we get to work late, we didn't hand in our projects on time or our assignments on time. But what happens is one thing leads to the other. Oftentimes when I've seen people trying to get rid of negative energies, these negative energies are aware already what you're going to do. And so what happens is that they start to create blockages. They start to create a lot of obstacles. There was one client of mine She's in the United States. Her sister had moved to England with their father. She apparently, the sister, had opened up a book that was forbidden from the family. They had become Christians, but that book was a satanic book. It was the book of Satan. So she started to read it, and the book of Satan, honestly, the version that has been written, that's not, that's not the real devil. The real devil is far worse. That's a Satan that you want to just see on TV. No, no, no. The real Satan is nasty. Very nasty. Scary. It's not the same. It's not the same. What happens here is this lady opened the book. She started reading it. She believed it, which was fine. But then she also had some other books that she opened up and she started reading it. So she started doing some rituals. Whatever she did... Eventually, she ended up getting possessed, and she would spit on her dad. She would talk, and her voice would change into a deeper voice. It wouldn't sound like hers. Her eyes would turn very dark. She had dark blue eyes, but they would turn very dark. 
the, her eye color would change. So clearly, I could tell. I mean, I asked my angel guide. Intuitively, I could sense it, feel it. So this girl in the States, her sister said that she needs help. Oh, my heavens. For the life of her, that girl could not leave the United States because she was going to go there and I was going to give her the method. I gave her the method. However, the negative energies knew that she's on her way. And so her flight got canceled. But before that, her car didn't work. Mm -hmm. Then her flight got canceled. Then something happened to her credit card afterwards, too. There was three different things that happened. And she ended up emailing me and telling me, you know what, Asnoichia, I don't think this is meant for me. She's going to have to figure this out on her own. And that really broke my heart because I know that that girl could have been saved from this negative energy. She started hurting herself. And um, the father knew exactly what was going on. And the father said he can't, he was being threatened by her too. So he, like, they, they all were just so desperate. And they didn't know what to do. And eventually they just, did, they just left her. You can't give up on people. You can't give up on human beings. That's not what we're here for. That's why there's so many of us, because we're here for each other. You can't do that. Unfortunately, my client, she also discontinued communicating with me regarding that particular person, her sister, because she just thought that every time she talked about it, it would create some problems and obstacles. You see, these negative energies are aware, and they create problems. I have seen it. I've seen it many times. I would be suffering um, sleep paralysis, and just before somebody would knock on my door, the sleep paralysis would go away, but I would actually feel something entering the room from the bottom area of my door. And I could feel it slip in, go up above the bed, and sit on top of my chest. What was really strange that this happened many times, I've had sleep paralysis for so long, not anymore. What happened is I noticed a few times that when my loved one opened the door, or whoever opened the door, it would go away within a second just before they came in. So they knew. They knew that this person is coming and we have to leave. So they are very aware of what's going on around us, what's going on in our past, and what is the future like. And that is exactly what I was talking about with Ouija boards. People have that ability to ask spirits as well as demons as to what is our future like? Who am I going to marry? Who am I going to meet? Am I going to get that house? Um, those type of things. It's human nature to ask. It's been like that for thousands and thousands of years from oracles. It's been like that. However, sometimes you get the wrong resources, right? You can get your answers. You have the good and the bad. You just have to pick the correct one, which is good. These negative energies altogether, when I help people, because of my own experience, I have seen that exorcisms, they work, but only to a certain degree. Firstly, I don't even know why people have a business out of exorcisms. $500 for an exorcism? Why would you do that? The person's already desperate anyway. Why would you do that? Are you making money from negative energies? Oh, yeah, you are. It's a business, isn't it? That enrages me. That really does. And that's the, oh, I have to say that's the godly parts that's inside of me that creates fire in my heart because I get really, really angry about that. They should not be making so much money to help human beings get rid of negative energies. It is heartbreaking. It really, it really ruins a society. It ruins one person, then two people, spreads like a cancer, and then the entire town is infected with these type of things. What I have is, what I've created is like an exorcism package. I don't announce it like that, but in this recording, that's what I'll tell you what it is. It's an actual exorcism package. It is probably the most easiest and softest way and clever way, sniper way, of getting rid of these things without giving them much time to react. Often exorcists, they do research they have a look at the family or the victim, and they find out, oh, do they have mental health issues, this, that, and the other. If it's not that, they try to prove, okay, 
Is this、uh, a creak in the house? Is there a problem with the ventilation system? Is that why this sound is coming? Or is there something wrong with their vocal cords? Because their voice sounds different sometimes. But what happens is when you're doing all of that, you are actually starting to prepare the negative energy. Why is that so smart? How is that smart? Why are you trying to prepare and let this negative energy know? Jesus had his own way of getting rid of energies, negative energies, and that's his way, right? We do follow in his footsteps in the way he got rid of negative energies. However, I've also seen negative energies being taken out by negative energies. There are some places in the world where they have deities. However, these deities are very elemental and they help. Provide the guidance and the support to get rid of negative energies, but that is literally one negative energy getting rid of another one. At the end of the day, it's all still negative energy. You're not supposed to be around negative energy because it is unhealthy. Now, going back to the rituals that some people have in terms of exorcism, so they do the research, they find out, find out a few things, and then they finally start to question the individual. They do this, you know, big prayer. And yes, they have holy water, they start talking, they start to ask the name of the demon. Okay, great, you got a name. Did you really need to know the name? In my method, you don't need to know crap because you don't want to know about them. Who wants to know about them? Nobody. All you want to do is just get rid of them. You're not going to give them your time, your energy, nothing. You're not going to even address who they are. They're nothing to you. So, what happens is when those people, the priests, and it's not like they're all negative, no. The priests do what they do because they need to do it. It's very political now. Things have changed over the years. They have to be very、um, gentle, very soft. They have to be very careful. They're always worried about lawsuits, things like that, right? So it is a very different type of situation that they are in. Myself, personally, because I've been through so much, I created this stuff and it works. And I've seen it work. Thousands of people have used it already and it works. So, this is、uh, what I'm talking about is a holy light package that I actually have created. And People have bought that package. It's theirs forever. You keep it, you use it, and you get rid of negative energy. It's very simple, very easy, very effective. So, with my method, I have seen no, it's not just one negative energy on the inside, it's multiple negative energies. So, one may pop up, the weakest one may pop up, but the other few will stay inside. And Shh, they will be very quiet. They won't make a sound. Eventually, they can fade over time. The readings I've done, I've seen inside of a person eight demons and nine evil spirits. Just yesterday, I was doing a reading, just before I did this recording. And that is a very common number. That's how many negative energies we have inside of us. Now, some people have this. Phase where they actually become fully possessed. And that is definitely when you do need a whole lot of help, no matter where you get it from, whether it's a priest, a guru, pandit, whatever. You get the help from where you need it to get rid of these things. My method, for example, is very simple. I just use candles, I use words, holy water, and actions from your hands. It's not a lot. That's all you need in order to get rid of negative energies. Now, when a priest, for example, is taking care of an individual, they are looking on the inside of that individual. Did they actually get rid of the evil spirits? Sometimes they do, not all the time, they're unable to. Did they know? That around that person's aura, there is also demons and evil spirits lingering around the aura. How do I know that? Because it happened to me. I had something sitting apparently on my shoulders. I actually felt it in, while I was sleeping once. That was crazy. 
I'll just tell you, for example, a gargoyle. Imagine you have a child, a, t- a one-year-old or a two-year-old, and you have them sitting on your shoulders with their knees against your cheek and their legs, their toes are just a little downwards in front of your shoulders, okay? And they have their hand wrapped around your neck. They have their chin right on top of your forehead. Now imagine you sleeping and that, and then you hear the most hideous, creepiest kind of giggle that you've ever heard. That was what I would call like a gargoyle. That's what in my mind's eye, that's what I saw when I actually experienced that. And I thought it was just a dream. Apparently it wasn't. One of my relatives that truly hates me, uh, the jealous ones, there's two of them, they had sent something during that time actually. And it was only after a few years that the person that I went to that helped me, he actually said that you have something sitting on you. And I was like, what? I was like, oh my God, okay, that was real. That was not a lie. And I could feel a strange type of lightness after he got rid of it. It was the weirdest thing. Now, he also said that there are things around my aura. And this I learned from a pundit because I've been through it. This is a very, very rare thing for pundits to do. It's, very, it's not common. A pundit is um, a, religious, a religious priest from, um, from the Hindu religion, right? That's a pundit. Now, what's interesting is that when he told me this, I didn't realize this, but he was the one that actually helped get rid of the ones inside of my body and outside of my aura. That's how I learned what is around my aura, that people, if I have it, the world has it. No? So I'm not the only one that has it. These negative energies are not only on the inside, but they're on the outside as well. And when you look at the home, are there negative energies in the home? Oh yeah, definitely. In one of my packages, which is called the Chakra Checkup package, I look at your chakras from a distance. I'm able to do that, remote viewing. And with the help of my angel guide and my higher intuitive self, I'm able to tell you how many negative energies you have in your home, around your aura, and inside of your body. And so when I tell you, I tell you exactly what you need to do. You got the instructions and you have that information for the rest of your life. That is something that I have created, which is called a chakra checkup. If you want, I will be putting the link below. And I also have, of course, the one and only Holy Light Package, which I would say is my bestseller. It's really With the grace of God, it has truly helped a lot of people. Tons and tons of people. People even buy it as gifts for each other. That was I was pretty surprised to see that. But it is a gift. Yep. The home itself. If somebody visits your home and they're jealous of you, for example, they may end up sending you negative energies, sometimes without even knowing that they're doing it. It's just an intention. The intention is there and they send that negative energy, but they really need to mean it from their heart. They really need to hate you from their heart and then that works. But that is, of course, bad karma. And that's why they are down in the dumps and you're all the way up there. That's why. What happens is you sometimes invite people over or somebody may give you the evil eye and these negative energies, like I told you, like an arrow, Now, this arrow doesn't do a U-turn and go back to the negative energy. No, this arrow is targeted from one person that I hate so-and-so. And I want them to suffer, and I just hope they never succeed. Okay, so they've set their intention. That arrow energetically goes out towards that individual. But on the way, the arrow picks up negative energies. And those are the ones that are very revengeful, the energy of revenge, the, the, the energy that the demon or the evil spirit of jealousy, right? Those type of energies, then they lock onto this, <laughs> like a missile, but they lock onto this arrow, I'm calling it, and it goes directly towards that person. 
Now, sometimes what happens, depending on the strength of the intention, these negative energies don't go inside of the person and they don't even go around the aura, but they settle themselves inside of a person's home. They live inside of your home, demons and evil spirits. Not everybody's home would actually fall victim to that. Sometimes we have angels and they exist on a different dimension. They can see demons and demons can see angels. And so they keep their distance from those type of places because the angels have such light that it actually burns them. It actually feels as if it's burning. Their light is so bright that it gets rid of shadows. So if you are what they call religious, if you are a believer of the Christ consciousness or the supreme being, the God of gods who we call, you, on average, I'm saying here on average, will be protected. The only problem is sometimes when we have certain types of negative energies, they resonate with certain types of elemental gods too. That is a whole different story. That's a whole different like category of deities, demigods. They are very much elemental. What happens is those negative energies are attracted to that because it is a part of who they are. It is a part of the element of earth. And if you want to get rid of negative energies, then you have to do what they say, fight fire with fire. Yes, not fire with water. Fighting fire with fire means you use the angels to tackle the demons. You don't use demigods or deities to tackle the demons because their level, yes, is much higher, but their strengths are different. Their intentions are different. We can't just decide to use a particular demigod to do something when it's not supposed to be assigned to that something. So we have a god of fire. We have a god of abundance. We have the god of nature. Those type of, those type of energies are more on the side of protecting negative energy. Why? Because... They are from the earth itself, and they are not from a heavenly realm, which is a different level. So there's different levels, and you have to deal with the level according to what is being thrown to you. And so if you have a demon, you tackle that demon with an angel. Now, every culture, and I've studied many cultures, has different ways of expelling negative energies. Whatever works for you, do it, because negative energies, they shouldn't have any place in your life. Whatever you do to get rid of them, do it. If you don't have any methods, please get the Holy Light Package, which I have a link below in the description box. These negative energies in the home, what do they do? They actually block anything that is coming into your home. So let's say somebody is sending you best wishes from somewhere. Somebody is sending you um, good luck, blessings. Why aren't you getting that? Because those are soft, positive energies that are being sent to your doorway. And these negative energies are there standing there like guards, really bad guards, evil guards. And so they push out and they do not allow in. You might be praying, you may be sending positive vibes out into the universe, which is great, asking the universe for abundance. But have you really looked around your aura, inside of your body and outside your home, even around the home itself? Negative energies, they stop it, they block it. There's tons of them these days. That's very, very common. There was one person that I did a reading for. The highest number I've ever seen in their home, it was 23 demons and 17 or 18 evil spirits. But the demons were the whole, like that was the big crowd right there. 23 of them. 
in that home, there was a couple that had separated. They were on the verge of divorce. There was alcoholism. There was violence. There was also um, schizophrenia. And this is what my client told me. And it took them about three to four months to continue the methods that I told them. And eventually, they didn't get separated. The fights decreased. They started to feel better. However, because we become so used to habits and over the years, when negative energies are with us, it molds us into who we are. Our personalities change. It's difficult to go back once our personalities change. But if you can pick up the pieces and literally scan yourself and know yourself that why am I being so angry suddenly? Why is this happening? You move into a new home and you realize as soon as you go there, things are breaking or you start fighting more or your kids are ignoring you more. People are getting sick in the home. Why is that happening? That's because of negative energies in the home. Doing a house blessing is very, very important. It happens all around the Eastern world, and there's a reason for it. They've been there, done that. That's why. It is important to have a house blessing, even when you get a new home, but even if you're in a home itself. My package, which is the Holy Light Package, it will teach you how to get rid of negative energies from your home, around your aura, and inside of your body. Now, I wanted to just share one story that was really, uh, it's creepy, but it's funny too. So there was this girl, and she was my client, and she told me she started the Holy Light Package. And when she was going around the home sprinkling holy water, what happened was that she said she heard and this is really personal for ladies, she heard this sound coming from inside of her closet. And she said it was a vibrating sound, like it was like a humming kind of sound. So she opened the door, and she saw that one of her boxes was shifting, like there's something inside, and it's vibrating, right? So she opens the box, and she sees it's her vibrator. Now, what was really freaking her out at that moment is that it did not have batteries. And it was just going on its own. And so she immediately emailed me. And I told her, well, that is the spirit of addiction. And so she was obviously, just like many ladies, very hormonal. So she wanted to, you know, have a good time. But that particular negative energy used to thrive on this. They used to survive on her being in this state. She would use that item. It would immerse itself inside of that item. It would become the item. And she would put it inside of herself. And imagine that. You actually doing something like that and you got this thing inside of you? It ends up radiating its own energy inside of a human being. And what happens is, yes, a person does become addicted. This particular case, she was, she was single. And so she was, you know, she needed company, right? The problem is there's limitations. And there are these times when we overindulge in things, we become addicted to things, we become, become obsessed over these things. And that's when it becomes uh, toxic, right? To a certain degree, everything is healthy. Anything beyond that, it's not. Too much of anything is bad for us, even love. When she told me this, um, it was very uh, creepy because that was the first time I've seen that. But then I asked my angel guide and then she told me also, the client, what had happened in detail. So what happens is because it's energy, it turns into a battery itself because it is energy. And some of you might be wondering, oh, well, it didn't have batteries, how to turn on. Okay, the negative energy has the ability itself of being energy. And that is how sometimes if you have the radio off or it's not even plugged in, it can turn on by itself. That's how sometimes Christmas lights turn on, even though they are not on, they can start flickering. Um, electric, anything that's electric, right? It will turn on. Why? Because the negative energies have the ability to do so because they themselves are energy. 
think of them as little mini batteries. And so they just put themselves inside of the device and it actually turns on. Now, she said it lasted for a good like 30, 40 seconds. And I told her that at that time, that particular entity was trying to tempt her. That, oh, please don't get rid of me. You know how much you like me. That entity had become probably Mr. Dildo. Yeah. So it had become attached to her. However, it was in a toxic way. So it didn't want to leave. But it truly was one of the weirdest situations I've seen. There's other people that have done some prayers sometimes. And one lady actually heard, she said that, oh, I don't have any negative energies in my home. And I said, well, I see them. <laughs> and so the weirdest thing happened. She said she had done the prayer and she was sitting and then she started hearing scratching sounds underneath her floor, underneath, as if something was underneath. Eventually, that's all she ever heard, but it went away. It did go away. So when she started doing that, she actually triggered what was there. But why did she come to me in the first place? Not just to get rid of negative energies, but to check her chakras, to make sure she's safe, make sure she's okay. What happened is with that package, I include the Holy Light package. And so I was able to see, okay, what's going on inside of her home? How is that affecting her? What's going on around her aura? What's going on inside of her chakra centers? This is something that I have the ability of doing. And so I told her, and then uh, that's what happened. That was pretty interesting too. Another interesting thing that happened once, there was this really sweet girl, uh, one of my clients, and she's so adorable. She printed out one of the main pages that she was supposed to have in order to do one of the um, methods that I have created. And for the life of her, she said she printed it and she could not find it in her home at all. She looked in her bedroom everywhere. And I remember this vividly. She wrote to me and so she said that, can you please resend me the package? Because for some reason, I can't see it in my email anymore and I don't even have the paper anymore. So I did send it. And these type of things are exactly what I'm talking about. Obstacles, right? Hindrances that these negative energies create because they don't want to, they don't want to leave. They're feeding off of us. She actually told me that this was really weird. She went to sleep on the left. Uh, it was the right side of the bed, she said. So she went to sleep on the right side of the bed. And in the morning when she woke up, she saw the sheet of paper on top of the left side of the bed where the other pillow was, gently placed right on the top, and she had her head turned. She was sleeping towards that area, and she saw it, and she freaked the hell out. <laughs> she was like, what? Where did this come from? So she asked me, and I had a look with my angel guide, and Angel Fakiel told me that that was Archangel Michael. He had come. He was worried about her. He located it for her from wherever, I don't know, wherever it went. And he placed it right beside her. That sweetheart did that particular method early in the morning as soon as she got up because she was reassured that, you know what? Archangel Michael has got her back. These are just a couple of examples I have, but they're really interesting. One person has seen shadows just on the ceiling actually and they went away but it was only because she was getting rid of them but nothing crazy has happened like nobody like walking on walls or any type of thing being broken or or uh, moved around I mean personally I have experienced that and it's better to do this kind of stuff and get rid of it than to have it increase my mother at some point in time became very accepting of the fact that we had something in her apartment. Oh my goodness. And I told her we're not supposed to be accepting of it because I noticed my mother had started to become very weak. She started to get dark circles. And it was there was no reason for that because there was no stress, no tension. Her lifestyle hadn't changed. Her medicines hadn't changed. Her diet hadn't changed. So what's causing this all of a sudden? And because... It's like I had my spidey senses really high at that time. I just knew, oh my goodness, I can't have any of this come back into my life. I did these prayer methods and yes, it went away. But at that time, my own experience was I was hearing things in the kitchen. So like, like a box falling down or a lid of Tupperware or plastic being closed. 
um, a dish being put to the side. And I was like, who is this lady? So apparently it was a lady from outside. So let me just tell you guys two things, okay? One of my own life experiences. When it is time for evening, when the sun is setting, okay? And there is that time period when, when you wake up and you don't even know if it's morning or evening, right? That time. It's very important to close your curtains. I know it sounds terrible, and many of you might be like, why? Why would I do that? <laughs> because your home becomes very inviting at that time. And a few times that has happened to me, and that's how this particular female from outside actually ended up in my place, because she had seen that my home was very warm and soft and accommodating. I had Christmas lights on. I had the window open. It just looked so beautiful. Yeah, but I ended up inviting something really bad. And the first time I was sleeping right beside the window and I had sleep paralysis, but I felt this being on top of me and I couldn't breathe. The blanket itself that was on top of me, it was suffocating me. And I felt it leave me and I felt and sensed it go to the kitchen. And ever since then, there were those sounds. So I knew that something had come from the outside, wanted to get inside of me, did not, was not successful, but that it just ended up in the kitchen. I remembered that my ancestors have said from India, when it's evening, you make sure you close your curtains. I don't know if this is all over India, but at least where I am from in the Himalayas, they're very particular about this. A lot of weird things happen in the Himalayas. They only told me that. And what I found interesting is that they were right. I told my, my family to start doing that, and they started notice, noticing a little bit of a difference in their home environment. These things actually have a rush hour during that time. It's when they're passing by, going places. It's important for that time for you to kind of shut your curtains. If you don't have curtains, just put a sheet, but that is important at that time. Now, the other thing, I was living on the eighth story of the apartment building and B before that area comes this beautiful little forest that they have in the complex. The thing is, it's the eighth story, right? So these negative energies don't have to be just floating around on the bottom. No, they can go all the way to the top. So don't think that if you're in a high-rise building that you are an untouchable. You're not. They will find you and they will feel invited and they will come in. So you have to be careful. Some of you might want to follow that. Some of you might not. If you really do feel that you have a lot of negative energy around you, I would recommend that you do close your curtains when it's about evening time, uh, when it's just about to get really, really dark. Also, I wanted to mention that during lunchtime, during the time of, 11, okay, 11.30, I'm getting the number 11.30, to 1.30, and even 2.30, Okay, that's a pretty big span. So from 11.30 to about 2.30, do not sit underneath a tree, especially in a park or in a forest area. Why is that? Many, many people in India told me not to do that. And, oh, would I listen at the time? No, I wouldn't listen. I would just go and sit there until I started experiencing many, many things. Something got attached to me. I'd feel something sleeping right beside me, touching me. I couldn't see it, but I could feel the weight of it right next to me. I could feel its hand on me, but I could not see anything. Yeah, a lot of weird stuff. And I asked my mom at that time, and then she said, well, <laughs> she said, well, I told you not to go down that area and sit by that tree and read that book. And it was, it was weird because in those countries, these people, they just know that this is the kind of stuff that happens because it's very normal for them. For me, because I was born and brought up in Canada and I'd moved to India for some time, for me, that was just new, right? I had no idea of any of this kind of stuff. That unfortunately stayed with me for a very, very long time. And it, uh, it tormented me. I couldn't sleep. It was, uh, I'll talk about all of my experiences one day, probably in another video, a lot of weird things that have happened. It's important to stay away from that type of an area during 
that peak time. If you want to sit at a picnic table or if you want to sit in um, an area where there's shore, where there's maybe bushes or there's plain grass, that is not a problem. Just try to avoid an actual tree. That's all. I know some of you may want to go for picnics. Some of you may want to do certain things near a tree at a certain time. But the best thing to do is to be distant from it. If you have a tree in your own property, that usually is not a bad thing. You can just do a little prayer, touch the tree, talk to the tree, give it a prayer, and anything that is negative around it or inside of it will go away. That is your property. That's your territory. So there shouldn't be a problem. But sometimes if you go to an unknown place like a forest or like a park, those places have a lot of freedom when it comes to what type of negative energies or positive energies are going to be staying there. Most of them are negative. And the positive energies you see like being around people and they like being around um, heaven. So they come and go. It's the negative energies that typically find these spaces because it's like, they're kind of like rejects, right? They're rejected. Also, of course, never ever disrespect a graveyard. In India, I have seen, because they're from a different religion, I have seen a lot of people from different religions hang out in the graveyard, teenagers, doing studies, sitting on a grave, having drinks, having chips, things like that, like... Where's the respect? So the point is, why do you want to upset these beings? Even if it is a good being, you're going to get it upset. You're going to get it pretty pissed off. Let's just leave them alone. So it's best not to disturb certain places with certain beings because that is their life. You have your own life to live. You let them live their own life. We have to see the world not in just the 3D, but how it all comes together. And when you do that, you are able to harmonize yourself with nature, with God, with everything around you. But you have to have that respect for everybody, even for evil spirits and for entities and for demons. There's still a level of knowingness, but also a little bit of respect. You don't want to piss people off. You don't want to get these things upset. There's no reason to go and challenge. There's no reason to go and challenge. You don't need that. You have many other problems in your life. Jumping on to a slightly different topic, which will be a video on its own. I'm just going to touch a little bit on it. This is regarding black magic, witchcraft, voodoo. This is regarding hexes, curses, those type of things. These negative energies, as I mentioned before, can be manipulated. People sacrifice certain things, especially blood sacrifice is very uh, prominent. And it is very easy for females because they actually end up using their period blood. They don't even try to cut themselves. No, period blood's much easier. Let's just do it that way. A lot of weird stuff happens. So it's very easy for people to sell their souls to who we call the devil. And do certain things and get their way. I saw one lady, I knew her, and she actually did black magic on her father because she wanted to get married to a boy that the father refused. And what, have en what ended up happening is that the father got cancer and he died. Now, these negative energies can also create illnesses inside of the body. How do they affect us? You might notice that something has happened to you either through somebody that might have been jealous or your own upsetting, depressive state may have attracted these negative energies. And so now they hover around you and they just kind of make your life miserable. They do affect our career. They affect various relationships. If you have negative energies inside of your crown chakra, it can create a lot of blockages in your third eye, your crown chakra. So you can't um, think straight. You feel sometimes like you have vertigo or you feel you feel dizzy. People have only come to me literally after they have been to doctors and specialists. And I do ask them, have you actually gone to a doctor? <laughs> I, I ain't no doctor. All I know is that myself, having gone through so much over my lifetime, one problem after the other after the other, and the doctors could not connect the dots, there was no reason and there was no cure. 
it was only after many things that I've gone through, as I've mentioned before, that I was able to do all this. Now, these people, they come to me, they tell me that I have this, this, and this. And so, yes, these negative energies have the ability, and I've learned this the hard way because I, I went through it myself, and then I experienced it being released from me. These negative energies are able to settle themselves inside of your chakra centers. Why? Because they are energies, and your chakra centers are energy. It's, there's an energy flow. This is negative energy mixed with positive energy. Now, just as an example, imagine your chakras are turning clockwise, and they have a speed. Each chakra has a speed. We all know it has a vibration. Now, imagine another piece of energy coming inside of it. That energy, which is evil, spirit, evil demon, even a jinn. It is energy mixed with your energy. It has the ability of increasing the speed of your chakra or decreasing the speed of your chakra. For example, some people, when they go to the doctors and they cannot find, this happened to my own mom, I was able to heal her. Thank God for that, because I lost my dad to black magic when I was 17. I discovered that there was a demon, jinn, an evil spirit inside of her heart chakra. She had high blood pressure. She was admitted to the hospital. It was above 215 plus. She's at like 70 something years old. That's not healthy, right? And what I realized was when I got rid of that stuff, she was normal. At right now, she has reduced her medicines in half. Imagine that. I never, ever, ever would have imagined that because I never even knew that I had the capability of doing such a thing. And it's funny because I'm still human and so are you. So if I can do it, you can do it. And I've created a very comprehensive way of doing this. Now, the negative energies. Imagine in your heart chakra, Let's not say you, okay? Because I don't want you guys to actually invite something inside. Let's say there's somebody else. All right. That person inside of them is their heart chakra. The heart chakra is associated to your bodily functions. All of the chakras are associated to your bodily functions, your physical bodily functions. These negative energies have the capability of speeding up that energy flow, which means an individual may get high blood pressure. These negative energies have the ability of making it slow, which means someone will get low blood pressure. Similarly, we have, for example, the sacral chakra or even the solar plexus chakra. So in those areas, we're talking a lot about digestion and how the organs work. Some people, if it's too fast, can get diarrhea. And if it's too slow, you get constipation. When people do black magic, usually they end up sending these negative energies to certain parts of their body. And so they are assigned as if it is a bloody store, a, a seven story building, an apartment building with a bunch of tenants inside that aren't even paying the rent, right? They are inside of us. Are they supposed to be? Absolutely not. Why are they? Because they want the energy. They need the energy because they don't have a body of their own anymore, especially evil spirits, because at one point they were people. They can even be beyond people, it can be beings from other places, which I have also done readings and I've, I, I see that there are other beings out there in this galaxy. It's the speed of thought. They can be at anywhere, like any location beyond our solar system even, but once they're here, then they're here and they can actually adapt and become part of the society either on a spiritual realm or even within the realm of the demons. That is typically where we have that from and that's also another topic I'll be talking about in the far future about negative energies as well as what is beyond our planet Earth in terms of negative energy and how that affects us. This is something that a lot of people don't understand that when we have negative energies inside of our body, 
It is actually targeted and it's targeting the energy centers. And the energy centers are our chakra centers. And this is why I have a lot of Reiki masters that come to me and a lot of people that are like experts and gurus to heal the chakras. And they're like, I have done this so many times and I'm still not able to align my chakra. And then I do just one reading and I'm like, well, you got these many negative energies inside of that chakra. That's why it's being stubborn. So it's a matter of getting those negative energies out first. And you don't even have to align your chakra afterwards. Once it's gone, the natural flow will come back. Sometimes I've had clients where their chakra centers are balanced, but then also there's some that are out of balance. So, for example, it would be from top to bottom, from the crown chakra all the way down to the root. It would be balanced and then out of balance, balanced and then out of balance, so on and so forth. But there's a switch between both types. What happens when you have out of balance and then you have balanced and then you have out of balance on the bottom? Well, the one that's balanced in the middle that is considered balanced is no more balanced because think of it as a current and flow. The top of it, where the other chakra is, it is turning, but it is out of balance. And the one below the balanced one is also turning, but it is out of balance. That current will have a different type of flow and speed, and it will disturb the one that is in the middle, which is the balanced one. And so even if you think that it's actually balanced, if you have anything around it that is out of balance, it too will create a disruption and there will be a difference in the balance of your chakra. Even if you think that it's half fixed, that's the reason why. As many of you know, I've been through a lot, I've seen a lot, and I'm very logical when I talk about stuff and you guys love that and I love you guys for loving me. But I really wanted to talk about this entire topic and I know I've covered a lot, but I also know I have not covered enough. There is so much to talk about when it comes to negative energies. And hopefully I will be able to put more content up here so that you guys can be well aware of what you're dealing with. The majority of the stuff I have talked about today I have gone through it. I have seen my clients go through it. And so this is from people, right? This is just genuine people. And these are people that have come to me for help. I mean, I'm surprised that I even have the ability of helping people. I, I don't, I still sometimes wonder, like, how did this all happen? <laughs> happened very fast, I must say that. All I can say is that, yes, everything in my life was... I guess, building up until this point, right? And then boom, all of a sudden I realize I can do this kind of stuff and I can help people. One of the things that I've had in my mind that was spoken to me by a collection of angels, the main seven angels, as well as who we call the divine, who would be God, they said, you help us and we will help you. And I remember I was walking from my workplace outside. I'd reached home. I was in the parking lot of the train station. And that's where I heard this. It was the weirdest thing. And I was like, what does that mean? <laughs> what are they trying to tell me? I did not understand because that is when I just had started off uh, doing this whole channel and, and trying to put together this package to help people. The whole goal here is to make people healthy, spiritually, emotionally, physically, it is a passion that I have. It is a right that you have to be happy and to be allowed and able to manifest what it is that you want in your life. In my tarot readings, sometimes I talk about how we have a lot of good things that are written for us in our book of life that God originally had written for us. And it's God... It's the celestial beings, it's the angels, everybody gets together and they write our story based on certain things that have happened from our past lives too. Part of it, we also have a say in the matter. So we come here, 
we have these lives that we act out. And what happens is sometimes we encounter negative energies. And when that happens, it's the devil throwing in a monkey wrench into what we would call God's plan. And it's inevitable because we are on planet Earth. We are in a place that is very different from where the realm of heaven is, as well as hell even. We're not in the spiritual world. When we're dealing with certain problems in this lifetime, we need to not only look at the people around us, but we need to look at our own attitude and see how we have changed and see what has changed us. Was it a person? Was it a place? Was it something you did or ate? Drugs to get one high or alcohol, for example. Anything that impairs our better judgment. What happens is the body and the aura become porous. And this is spiritually, I'm saying, it becomes porous. So you have little holes, okay? You got little pores. And what happens is it's an invitation for the negative energies to come inside of you. They come inside mostly through your mouth, through your nose, and through your ears. When it does happen, we are not truly aware that it has happened. However, there are some people who have taken, I guess what you can say, uh, hallucinogens and stuff like that, right? They see certain realms, and those realms do exist. And sometimes they are able to actually see the negative energies as well. It depends truly on the person. If they are an easy target then they will be approached by these negative energies. If they are not an easy target, then these negative energies will be afraid of that person um, because they have positive energy around them. Those type of things also are high risk because um, sometimes by smoking, because it's an addiction, only because it's an addiction, addiction itself is a negative energy. Obsession itself is a negative energy. Those type of things stick with us and it becomes a habit. It becomes a who we are and we can't live without it. It's very important to try to stay in a positive environment with positive people. And if you cannot, then the only thing you can possibly do is just try to avoid those type of people. I know it's hard sometimes you're living in a place and there's a whole bunch of fighting. There's so much going on. But whatever you can do to keep your mind sane, you do you. You have to do what keeps you healthy. Many times we say, oh, let's stay positive. You can't stay positive when you're in such a negative atmosphere. As I mentioned before, some of my readings, I talk about manifestation. In order to manifest something in your life, think about a roadway. Now, think about big, giant rocks. These boulders are in many parts of this roadway. Now, think about those rocks as though that is negative energy. So you will now have the power and you will be empowered by the knowledge that I give to you through not only this particular audio recording, but through the package itself. If you decide to, um, to place an order for the package, you have that knowledge, how to get rid of these negative energies from that road. And once they're gone, then the way is clear. And then you are able to bring in the goodness that is owed to you karmically and whatever is written in your book of life, that will come to you. Before, it was not coming towards you because there was negative energies that were blocking it. And that's why if you're going to manifest, that's great. People say, I'm going to manifest. Okay, that's great. But have you thought about the things that are blocking your manifestations? No. If you can't see the things that you are manifesting, if you cannot see the positive energy, what makes you think there is no negative energy? Because there is. There's negative energies blocking us almost at every corner. Remember that when you do try to manifest, it's important to get rid of the negative energies. Remember, if you need to be positive, you need to be in a positive state of mind and environment. You can only be in that state of mind if you have goodness around you, positive energy around you, positive people around you. It truly depends on where in this world you live, right? There's people that live in many places when there's destruction, when there are hard times, sad times, people living in refugee camps, things like that. These are human beings. 
We right now, many of us have a roof over our heads. And those people have to suffer too. They have to adjust. They have to live their life. But they make the most out of it. That's resilience. And that's the human nature. No matter what brings them down, they're going to try and try. And you always have to try. You can't give up. These negative energies have this agenda. And the agenda is, if God is love, then what is the devil? The opposite, hate. If God has created love stories for you, which is what I read all day long, and they are beautiful, then the devil wants to throw in a monkey wrench and ruin that plan, ruin that story. And that's what the devil does. And who works for the devil? Negative energies. Just like angels work for God, good spirits work for God, we have the devil. And the ultimate goal is for the negative energies to overtake people so that they hurt themselves and so they die very soon. And the problem is some people may die without having education when it comes to the Christ consciousness. The Father is a being that prefers being in the Alpha state. The Father itself has the energy of feminine and masculine, but it prefers being in the Alpha state because there's more of a leadership role, there's more confidence. It chooses what to be, and it has chosen to be in the Alpha state. So we have someone who is a maker, a leader, someone who's confident, and these are just some traits that trickle down onto humanity. Regarding the plans that heaven writes for us, they are good plans. And it's important to know that when we say, why did God put us through this? Or why, have we have, why do we have to suffer like this? People don't know. And it took me years to figure this out. But God hasn't done that to you. The devil did that to you. Why? Because we're living in the devil's realm. Planet Earth has a lot of the devil. He dwells on a different dimension in this onion unit that we have. It's inevitable. This is why it's such a struggle. This is why it's so hard to live and to have materialistic gains, earning money, being happy. It's not easy because we're always being bombarded by these negative energies because it's so in tune with our emotions. The only thing I can say for some of you who might be feeling as if your luck is down or somebody really is jealous of you or you feel somebody's done black magic on you, it's important to know that there is a solution. You really can do a lot. And I say this through experience. You have that power to make a difference in your own life. And with the grace of God, I have been able to create something that you can use to help yourself. It's a self-help guide to make things better in your life by removing these negative energies. The agenda is if somebody passes away too soon, what happens is that they never had the opportunity of becoming a positive soul, an enlightened soul. They were not given that opportunity. And what happens to that particular spirit? The spirit of that person becomes a wandering spirit, a very lost spirit. When people who are doing black magic, curses and hexes, what happens when they see a wandering spirit like this? A voodoo master actually told me this once. They're able to manipulate and use these spirits in the worst kind of way for the type of nasty work that they do. So does that spirit have any will anymore? No, that spirit is a slave. And that is why our Lord and Savior, Christ, He promised us everlasting life. Where does that come from? That everlasting life and that freedom, that is exactly the opposite of what the negative energies have. 
The negative energies don't have freedom. They don't have will anymore because they are now subjugated. They are now slaves. And they are doing the dirty work. Even if they don't want to, they have to. It's spiritual warfare. It's been happening for centuries, thousands and thousands of years. Will it stop? At some point it will. It's like a game. At some point the game will stop. For some people, they will get the opportunity of being who they want to be and achieve everything in their life. And for others, they may have a lot of hardships. I just wanted to tell you guys that ultimately, you know, why are these negative energies around? What is their objective? Well, that's what it is. That's what they do. That's what they're meant to do. And they do it very well. No doubt about it. It's important to know that wherever there is darkness, there will always be light. A lot of people complain and they say, you're Christian. In the Bible it says, fortune telling is bad, it's evil, witchcraft, this, that, and the other. And I know that. I believe that. But when you kind of have a visitation by the divine and you have this knowing that it doesn't matter where I go. I'm supposed to help people. It doesn't matter if they're just people that are in a shady place, people that do tarot readings, people that are practicing witchcraft or something like that. It doesn't matter for me where I go because God is sending me there. That's what I feel. That's what I know. That's the only reason I am as successful as I am now. And I'm shocked that I am. That's the only reason I have so many people that believe in my abilities. Because they have seen it. They have experienced it. Not because they've just heard about it, but they themselves have gone through a few things. And I can tell them what they're feeling. I have that ability to do so. And so my angel guide has told me that I have certain things that I'm supposed to do. There was a reason why I came down to planet Earth. And now I'm seeing all of this unfold as each day goes by. And it is beautiful. And I love it. There's a lot of negative energies that want to take me down. There's voodoo masters, two of them that were actually trying to attack me. And one of my best friends, I might have mentioned this before, in another audio recording, that they became very scared of my methods because they use negative energy and they use demons in order to cause problems in people's lives and I was the one that was getting rid of them they hated me for it and they both worked together and they started sending negative energies towards me I did at some point fall ill and I did not know why but then it was shortly after that I realized what happened didn't even know that I had so many negative energies inside of my home where I was living, 14 demons. I had a prophetic dream about it. And so I did what I had to do. I got rid of them. And ever since then, now I have, I guess you can call them like angel guards. They're like uh, guards. And so they guard my home where I am right now. However, I had no clue that I had angels around me. And who told me that I had angels around me? I remember Angel Fakiel telling me that I had four angels right in the beginning when I'd started Asnoitia. One in the front, one in the back, one in the left and the side. There was four. And there were female angels, military angels. They had swords. I had no clue. I was like, oh, really? I didn't even know that, like, they're women. Okay, that's interesting. Girl power. So what happened was that I was aware of just the four and... A few years later, these two voodoo masters were trying to do some stuff, sent some stuff over, and it kept bouncing back. They ended up telling my friend, because it's really weird, my, my friend has two guys that are voodoo masters and they're best friends. And he's also my best friend too. And we are the opposite spectrum. He is, he's neither here nor there. But now he's been leaning towards more of the light, which is good. But he told me that these guys are trying to do this and they said that they couldn't even touch you. And he said they saw many angels around you. Now, many means more than four. 
It wasn't just four, it was more than that. They said that they were eight feet tall, they were huge, and they were scary looking. They scared the negative energies that came. And so the negative energies went right back. They didn't even approach. They saw it from a distance, apparently. He told me this. Afterwards, I checked with my angel guide and I said, like, has the number increased here of my bodyguards? <laughs> What's going on? And she told me, yes, it, the number had increased because of negative energy purposes and other issues. I'm not going to reveal the amount of um, angels, but there are definitely more than a few. So that truly made them scared and they just did not know how to get rid of me. Eventually they gave up, thank God for that, but I had no clue. I had absolutely no idea that this was happening and it's because it's like a buffer. They tackle all of this stuff and I am here in the center and I'm like, la, 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 let's do this, let's do that, let's do this reading now. <laughs> let's make this package now. <laughs> and I don't even know that these beings are surrounding me and they're helping me. So I appreciate that and I thank God for that. But it actually took somebody else to tell me this. I had no clue that the numbers had increased. So just understand this, guys. If you really are a believer, you will have protection. And it is not difficult. It's not hard. Getting rid of negative energies is not truly a scary thing. It's not like something you see in Hollywood movies. Honestly, I would say just on, a, on the level of scare, it might just be 10 to 15%. That's 10 to 15. That's 1, 5%, okay? Not a lot. There's not a lot of scary stuff that happens. So some of you might be like, oh, it's too scary. No, it's not. Don't worry about it. It's better to get rid of these negative energies anyway so that you can achieve what it is that you want in your life and whatever is owed to you karmically and whatever is written in your book of life. My darlings, that is the end of this particular recording. This is a very lengthy recording, but I want it to be very thorough. Like I mentioned, I do have a lot of interesting stories. They would bring a lot of good examples out into the open maybe clarify a few things for many of you that if you have actually gone through certain things. So eventually, keep an eye out for that. I will be uploading certain things that I've gone through, my own experiences. Some of you may resonate with it. Some of you might know it. And some of you may know what to do to avoid such a thing as well. Thank you all for tuning in, for your support. Please do like, share, and subscribe to this channel. And uh, please share this video as well. You all take care. Stay safe. Bye now.